Well, let's go back to the situation, this dire situation that the Ghanaians, both Ghanaian nationals and, and, and students, Ghanaian students in Ukraine, uh, there's the cities that are under attack, are calling for government intervention, specifically in those two uh, the cities, that's Sumi and Kharkiv. I have Kweku Amprechum, he's a Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister. He joins me on the telephone. Zapechum, good evening to you. Uh, good evening, GV3. And thank you very much for this opportunity. Great. Well, last Sunday, the Honorable Shirley Ayokobotri indicated that it's difficult to get to Sumi and Kharkiv, two of the cities under attack, where Ghanaians are. Is it still the position of the ministry that any Ghanaian in those eastern parts of Ukraine towns cannot be evacuated? Well, it's not that they, it's not that they cannot be evacuated. What we said was, what the, the strategy has been, is that uh, the Sumi and Kharkiv, they have universities that house, or we have a lot of Ghanaian students in those places. And they also happen to be at the very center of this whole Russian aggression against Ukraine. And it is very, very unsafe. In a war, in a war situation like this, the first thing you do is to advise your citizens to seek shelter. So the advice to our students and the Ghanaians over there was to seek shelter in designated bunkers. So that is where they are. And then also, we make all the necessary arrangements to make sure that the supplies that they need reach them. Now, after we've done this, and we realized that it was very, very precarious to be able to move them because we tried getting our ambassador in Moscow to intervene to try and move them across because Sumi is quite near to the Russian border. We realized that that would be also, uh, that would be very unsafe. So we started to activate other sources to see if we can reach out to the Ukrainian and then the Russian government to see if they can create a safe passage. Just two days ago, our vice president, Dr. Ba uh, Mahmoudou Baumia, uh, called the Russian ambassador to his office and spoke with him and uh, requested that uh, a special request be made to the Russian uh, uh, government that they should help create this uh, safe passage. African countries have also, in Addis Ababa, of which Ghana has been playing a leading role, has also appealed to the EU. The EU has also gotten involved, and an appeal has gone to both Ukraine and the Russian government. And as at about an hour ago, the Russian government has agreed to create a safe passage for foreigners who have been caught in Sumi and Kharkiv and in other areas where the intensity of the war is at a very high level. So there is some good news on the horizon. We just have to wait for the next couple of months a day or the next couple of hours a day or so to see what this will be in reality. But the good news is the two governments have agreed, Ukraine and Russia has agreed to create a safe passage for foreign nationals who are caught in, the, in those two places. So the development which obviously is worth noting is that the Russian government has agreed to create a safe passage for foreign nationals, including Ghanaians. Is including there a Ghanaians, yes, sure. Is there a particular timeline to this as to when this safe passage will be facilitated for these Ghanaians to leave Kharkiv and Sumi as we speak? Right. Um, I will not ask that, ask that now be able to tell you the timeline, but like I indicated earlier on, we are hoping that maybe in the next couple of hours, a day or so, we will see how this uh, gesture will be put into operation. But we will not be sitting down. At least the various levels that we went to lobby and uh, spoke to, we will intensify that action to make sure that what the Russian and the Ukrainian governments have indicated, they will actually honor it and honor it in real time. I'll tell you what. I've been speaking to some of these students in the bunkers, the designated bunkers that you talk about. They are there 22 yeah. hours a, d a day, and they come out only two hours. 
their food supplies are finished. They told us today, as a matter of fact, and they are having to struggle to get it. They went to some supermarkets, the shelves are empty. So you talk about making some arrangements for supplies to be given to them. What we are told today by the students themselves who joined us are saying that they are in the bunkers, yes, they, they are waking up by blasts close to their hostels. Their food supplies are finished. So is the ministry aware of this? And what's the arrangement for them? The ministry is very much aware of this situation, but I can also tell you that we have also spoken to some of the students today. And the situation is not as dire as you are putting it. I, I'm not saying that you haven't spoken to some students who are maybe giving you this line of the story. But I can also go on record to say that today, as I talk to you, we've spoken to about three students whose story is different. Yes, they are all in a very anxious moment. They don't know what's going to happen the next time. Again, the war is out there. It's very, very unsafe, and it's not easy for them to go out. So obviously, they are a bit worried that their supplies are going to run out. They will not want to sit down to see everything depleted before. So they are a little bit uh, very, very anxious. Yes, the issue to do with uh, the shops being empty or near empty, that is something that is also being confirmed to us. And I'm sure you also have to agree in the kind of situation, in that kind of war situation in, in, uh, in, in, in Ukraine, it is not going to be easy for the shops to be able to replenish I, 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 I get the point. Now, what I, was, I wanted to find out is, what's the plan to make available supplies for them? Because you agree that indeed their supplies are running out. So what's the plan? For as long as they well, stay there have, before they evacuate. You today, 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 we have sent money. We have credited some of their, their, their credit cards and some of their accounts so that they will have funds on their, on their credit cards to be able, if they are able to go out, or if in case it becomes possible for somebody to be able to uh, get them the supplies, they will be able to have the funds to purchase it. Today, we have sent money to them. You've sent money to them today? Yes, today. Thank you. Thank you for your time this evening. And uh, he is a Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration uh, joining us on Zoom on this. We're going to keep an eye on this and be updating our subsequent bulletins, get back to the students to cross-check what the situation is as we speak.